In a scathing new report, Amnesty International accuses Israel of committing the crime of apartheid against Palestinians in the occupied territories and Israel and against Palestinian refugees. The 274-page report, a product of four years of work, research and on-the-ground reporting, says that Israel has imposed a system of oppression and domination over Palestinians wherever it exercises control over the enjoyment of their rights across Israel and the occupied Palestinian territory and with regard to Palestinian refugees. The segregation is conducted in a systematic and highly institutionalized manner through laws, policies and practices all intended to prevent Palestinians from claiming and enjoying equal rights to Jewish Israelis within Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories and thus intended to oppress and dominate the Palestinian people. Strong words. But multiple Israeli leaders, in fact, including former prime ministers Ehud Barak and Ehud Olmert, have warned in the past that Israel was on a path towards apartheid. John Kerry once did as well. But any time the A word is mentioned, people lose their minds. South Africa is immediately invoked. Defenders of Israel say it's ludicrous to compare Israel to South Africa. Israel is nothing like apartheid-era South Africa, they say. There are two problems with that argument. First, as Amnesty International itself preemptively points out, this report does not seek to argue that or assess whether any system of oppression and domination as perpetrated in Israel and the occupied territories is, for instance, the same or analogous to the system of segregation, oppression and domination as perpetrated in South Africa between 1948 and 1994. Instead, this report analyzes the systematic discrimination currently perpetrated by Israel against Palestinians and determines whether it meets the international definition of apartheid. See, what people don't seem to get is that Israel doesn't have to be a replica of South Africa. Apartheid isn't defined by what happened in South Africa. It's defined by international law. For example, in the 1973 International Convention on the Suppression and Punishment of the Crime of Apartheid, quote, apartheid is defined as, quote, in human acts committed for the purpose of establishing and maintaining domination by one racial group of persons over any other racial group of persons and systematically oppressing them. That's what the world's leading human rights groups are now saying is happening on the ground in Israel and the occupied territories. And they say it meets the definition of the crime of apartheid under international law. The second point about South Africa is that, I'm sorry to say, a lot of leading South African anti-apartheid activists, like the late Desmond Tutu, who recently passed away, thought there were similarities between apartheid in South Africa and apartheid in Israel. Have a listen. You said that what you saw in Israel something that was quite akin to the situation in South Africa before freedom came to the black people of South Africa. Well, in many instances, worse. It's actually quite uh, distressing. Uh, for one thing, there were, we didn't have a war. And he's not the only South African to say that. Sadly, the reaction from the Israeli government and its defenders abroad to this new amnesty report has been as predictable as it has been disingenuous. An Israeli foreign ministry spokesperson accused amnesty of recycling lies, inconsistencies and unfounded assertions that originate from well-known anti-Israel hate organizations. Pro-Israel groups here in the US, like the ADL, APAC, the Democratic Majority for Israel, they all put out ridiculous statements accusing Amnesty International amnesty of inciting anti-Semitism, demonizing Israel, and allying with terrorist groups. They even accuse amnesty of trying to delegitimize Israel's creation because the report dares to point out that since its establishment in 1948, Israel has pursued an explicit policy of establishing and maintaining a Jewish demographic hegemony and maximizing its control over land to benefit Jewish Israelis while minimizing the number of Palestinians and restricting their rights and obstructing their ability to challenge this dispossession. What's weird is that nowadays, here in America, we don't like it when the far right tries to deny or rewrite our history, to whitewash what happened to black people when America was founded, when they try and gloss over the original sin of slavery. So why are we okay with an argument that says we shouldn't look at what happened when Israel was founded in 1948? We shouldn't cast a light on the anti-Palestinian atrocities and expulsions that occurred and that have since been documented by historians, Arab and Israeli, for decades. And are we expected to believe that Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch, which last year also accused Israel of apartheid in a detailed report, that they are filled with raging, anti raging anti-Semites? How about Israeli human rights groups like Bet Salem and Yesh Din that have also said Israel is committing the crime of apartheid against Palestinians in the occupied territories? Are they anti-Semitic too? 
How about a quarter of American Jews who say they think Israel is an apartheid state? Are they putting themselves in danger by saying that? Come on. Look, you don't have to believe Israel is committing apartheid against the Palestinians. You don't. You can disagree with that claim in good faith. It's a free country. And I admit it's a contentious and sensitive issue. What you cannot do is simply shout down all references to apartheid as anti-Semitic or anti-Israeli or biased or dangerous. You have to engage with the argument and with the evidence presented by multiple human rights groups. You have to read their damn reports and you have to speak to Palestinians. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.